Hi guys, welcome back. Today's video is on the Black Sea Greeks that have been added into RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. It's taken from a longer interview I did with Mauslos, one of the historians on RIS, and it is a corker, a really good video. So check that long video out in the description and Without further ado, make sure you like and subscribe, but enjoy. Uh, let's go to the Black Sea Greeks. I mean, uh, the first one is kind of uh, debatable because they're in the Sea of Marmara as well. But uh, we go with Byzantium over here. And for all you EU4 stands and Bi Byzantium stands, you can uh, you can play Byzantium before it was uh, the Roman Empire for, you know, well, a thousand, <laughs> a long time before it became the Eastern Roman Empire and, and uh, you know, a couple of thousand, well, 1,500 years or so before it died fully. Because um, I know there's a lot of people out there who love a bit of Byzantium. So, uh, yeah, which is a pretty cool little uh, little nation. Three three states, uh, three provinces, should I say, in Thrace and uh, across into, is that Coachelli? Co Coachelli? I can't remember the name of this Turkish state, but uh, someone, someone let me know in the... Uh, in the comments down below. But yeah, a couple in Thrace, one across the water. Um, but yeah, how yeah. come they are in the mod then? Well, you already mentioned one important reason <laughs> is um, that they are quite well now and people probably like to play as Byzantium whenever um, they are allowed to actually play as them. <laughs> yeah. Or play against them as well. And um, of course, their position is very unique. Mm. Polybius, our um, Hellenistic historian, actually praised them for not levying too many taxes and tolls on the goods that passed the Bosporus because they are, of course, in a very peculiar position, even though they are also in a bad position. Because towards the sea, he says, no city in the world is better situated than Byzantium because mm. they control this trade. They can always um, collect the taxes from that and the tolls, and they would always have money, but towards the land, they're in a quite quite of a bad position also because of the of the old what stations they have and their Thracians yeah. and Galatians to their west the in Tylers, Galatians have also arrived. And either them or the Thracians would always levy taxes and tributes on um, Byzantium, yeah, the Asti for instance, the Bitsia. Yeah. They all threaten them from from, from the land. Um, and this is one of the reasons why Byzantium was one of the members of the so called Nor Northern League which I think we have yeah. to get to now anyway. So basically in, in 280 BC, um, Seleucus the first um, has defeated Lysimachos and he's the last living Diadoch and he controls everything of Alexander's empire aside from Macedon and Egypt, where Ptolemy, um, now the second, uh, lives. And um, he has defeated Lysimachos and um, he's now on his way to cross the Strait of the Bosporus into Europe and to reclaim yeah. Macedon and Greece. And then he's murdered by um, Ptolemy Keraunos, exactly, the yeah. lightning, who betrays him and kills him, and then is killed himself by the Galatians, but that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. um, the point is that upon his death, um, his son Antiochus I ascends to the throne. And Antiochus, of course, is hell-bent on actually recreating the empire of his father. Mm. And now the Greek communities are around the Bosporus and the northern shore of the Black Sea, um, yeah, or northern shore of Asia Minor, they feel like they're threatened by the Seleucid advance and um, set up a league, which is called, well, which we don't actually know what it was called, but it's usually called the Northern League because of its position. Yeah. It was made up of Byzantium, um, it was made up of Byzantium and Chalcedon, which is controlled by Byzantium in the game. Um, it is. It was. It also had its members Chios, which is the green faction, just south of um, Byzantium. No, just south of Byzantium. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. I was. Yeah, Chios. Chios. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chios. Yeah. The kingdom of Bithynia to its east, and then further along the shores of the Black Sea, we'll find Heraclea Pontike, Heraclea on the Black Sea which was a mighty Greek city state in this region. And um, yeah, it also controlled other cities, Teion and Kieros, who were members of the Northern League themselves, mm. and they were under Heracleot rule. So all these states banded together, and they now had one glorious idea, and we can already see it at the map, how to combat the Seleucids, and it was to invite the Galatians over to Asia. 
so that <laughs> they could fight against the Seleucids. And this is how the Galatians came there in the first place. The Bithynians, the Heracleots, and the Byzantines. Byzantines actually gave them the weapons as well and some of the armor, so they may have already have used some Greek equipment from early on. Yeah. And of course, they terrorized Western Asia Minor, which would bring us, uh, yeah, I just mentioned I had some factions we will speak about. If you go to the Western coast to Ionia, now um, after crossing the Galatians, they, they sacked everything we see in the on the screen right now, basically. <laughs> and if you go down south, there were only two places, one in Lycia, um, but only one Greek city which withstood them because the Ptolemies and the, the Seleucids were also not able to really organize a defense against them at the time. Ephesus and um, uh, Ephesus and Miletos and Pergamon, they would hide behind the big walls. But there was one city which actually faced them in battle, which is Priene, and you saw it just there, Priene or the Priene, and they were the only ones... Yeah, they were the only ones who said, we will attack the Galatians. <laughs> okay. They challenged them to battle and defeated them. Um, wow. They were the only community who actually won the victory until in 275, Antiochus would actually show up with his elephants and the Galatians would see the elephants and run away. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And then that would at least relieve Western Asia Minor of the <laughs> more immediate threat. But well, the Northern League remained a thing until the end of the century. They would mm. intervene on the Black Sea. We will see on the western shores of the Black Sea, we will later see the Pontic Pentapolis, an alliance of five Greek city-states who had the idea to erect um, an emporion. You remember the name emporion yeah. from early on? Tormis, now on the north here, modern um, Constanza in Romania. Mm. And it was supposed to become the only trade port for the whole Black Sea. But of course, that was not a very positive development for our dear Byzantines <laughs> because now their monopoly and all the threat between the Mediterranean uh, the threat between the, the Mediterranean and the Black Sea was under threat so what they would do was declare war on the Petapolis yeah. um, unfortunately the Petapolis was supported by the Seleucids who would start the campaign Thrak and basically eliminate most of the Byzantine um, friends and allies that still existed in Thrak mm. but at the same time um the Byzantines were in the Northern League and they had the support of the Heracleots and the Chians, the Bithynians. Well, the Bithynians didn't do much in this war, to be fair. <laughs> and the Ptolemies. So the Ptolemy, Byzantine, Heracleot fleet, they defeated the Pentapolis and Byzantium, which retained its position as the trade harbor number one in, in this region. And it would afterwards continue to thrive economically and then, of course, also in Roman times when Constantine would eventually take a liking to it and choose it as his new capital. But oh, yeah, cool. the Northern League, um, it shaped the destiny of this region in the 3rd century BC until Nicomedes, I think it was Nicomedes, um, the king, the second, ah, I'm not sure, maybe it was Prusias, one of the Bithynian kings at the end of the 3rd century BC. He was very ambitious and he decided to attack Chios and um, with Macedonian help, he overcame the Kians and thus, um, yeah, ended the North League for good, so to say. Mm. Well, oh, for, cool. From a Brazilian point of view, anyway. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. I didn't know any of that, so really cool uh, to learn all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty sick, really. <laughs> Classic war against war against war against ally. Oh, I'm your ally. No, I'm not again, <laughs> sort of thing. That we see all through this period um yeah but yeah uh the big Seleucids coming in ham as well but uh yeah my favorite nation so i know i've not said it before <laughs> but uh yeah uh byzantium uh yeah they have uh, the byzantine epibarti so they've got marines uh, but that is their only unique unit at the minute yeah um, so let's talk a bit about pontic pentapolis and i have a little bit of a theory that these guys are actually going to be very strong in game because if we have a look at them they're large town large town town large town large town town large towns so they start with a lot of settlements decent level large town as well starting the game guys large town is decent level as well got every single settlement here has a port every single one so they are going yeah. to be rich, rich, rich. And really, when you look at the enemies, there's not many that are too scary nearby 
Of course, you've got Tylus, which is you know, not really very scary. Uh, you've got, of course, Kabile over here and the Asti, but... Uh, these guys are all going to be fighting each other. I think you're pretty in a decent spot. So if you do want to play these, I know they're unplayable uh, in, for this video. But if you do want to play them, then uh, <laughs> they're probably going to be a pretty strong nation, to be honest. And a pretty cool one, nonetheless. But uh, I think you've... Have you already explained why they're, in the, why they're in here then? Because they are, you know, on the West Coast trying to make all the money uh, a part of the Northern League. Or is there a bit more to it um, behind these guys? Um, so I think the alliance between the five poles, hence the name Pentapolis, obviously Penta's the name mm. five, like Pentagon, for instance, um, is um, the background is that Luzima host the arrival of Seleucus, he um, tried to exert influence over this area and then the city-states banded together in an alliance against him and rose up and afterwards they retained the alliance for a good reason. And, mm. and it was an alliance of five city-states, um, Calatis, um, Mesembria, or Mesembria, um, then we have uh, the later city, Tomis, but it's not a polis yet. We have Apollonia Pontice, Odessos, mm. and uh, I forgot one now. But yeah, we've, we have five different polis, all of them were colonies of Heraclea Pontice, or Miletos, actually. Oh, which is cool. interesting because the Heracleotes in the Northern League, they would turn against <laughs> yeah. the former colonies instead of supporting <laughs> them, they sided with the Byzantines. So, um, they did a so USA much for before, before the USA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much for factions for colonies. Yeah, it's a bit like that, but they lost. <laughs> so the Pentapolis lost and <laughs> suffered quite terribly in the second century and first century BC, really, from Dacian and Scythian and Bastani raids and whatever. Yeah. But the Romans, they would restore the Pentapolis. And of course, Ovid, the poet, would be sent there in his exile. Yeah. And speak about the bad weather and all that and the barbarian <laughs> languages he heard there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you already pointed out there are many cities. And that is really one of the main reasons um, we added them. Because they, they don't just have the five polis. They have I think, yeah, three more settlements. They have couple eight of towns, settlements, I think. Yeah. So Dionys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, exactly. Even though it's called Dionysopolis, it's not a polis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Achelos is, is only important. It's much more important latent, you could be. Uh, so um, they control a lot of land, and that's why they're there. And um, they have, I think, at least one special unit. Yeah, they've got the, so they've got the Yeah, they've got the Epilectoid, which is a reform unit. But they also do yeah, have access late. to the um, Thracian noble cav. So that was a question that I had oh. to. Why do they have access to the Thracian noble cav on, like, pretty much every other Greek nation? I can't think of any other Greek nations that have access to Thracian units, apart from Pontus, maybe. I mean, I can give you a, a stupid answer, which is they are in Thrak. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, fair. Uh, more, sp more specifically, the, the cult of the so-called Thracian horseman was very popular in these cities, so on, on a lot of gravestones and public mm. monuments, we find the Thracian horseman depicted. Yeah, and he is um, he is um, uh, honored as the founding hero of many of the cities, and of course it's 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 a bit of a myth. Yeah, but um, such a reverence for Thracian horsemen may also mean that Thracians lived there. I mean, we know that many Thracians also lived in these cities, of course, because of the ports you've mentioned and because of the wealth that was there, and the export of grain and all that. So you could could make good make money there. And, uh, Make good money there, and yeah. um, of course that would attract the Thracians as well. Hands that could also fight for the Tuppers. Yeah, it's a case of being too successful for uh, for your enemies, basically, isn't it? Oh, you're rich. Yeah. Why don't we go and take that city then? <laughs> yeah, they never had a strong military, but um, yeah. of course you can change it a bit. In the US, but they also do not have access to some quite some units which most Greek factions have. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Cool. So uh, let's move to Histria then. And they are actually kind of spread out. As you can see, they've got these two little regions down here. They've got a town of uh, Orgame, or Gay, Orgame, Istria, uh, Istrianon Limen, and Nikonion. So yeah, they've got quite a few different towns, but they are very spread out. So uh, yeah, um, what's going on with these guys then, with their spread out start? Yeah, so Istros is the, is the Greek name for the Danube, and you can see the delta of the Danube yeah. just there. 
defense um i think it's not very um difficult to figure out why they call it the city istros or istria <laughs> yeah. istria whatever <laughs> um yeah they 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 were always allies of the pentapolis but not members of the pentapolis um instead they preserved their autonomy and had their own harbors the other settlements are basically all emporiae trade ports yeah. i mean istrian on human literally means the harbor of the istrians <laughs> yeah okay which is why we gave it to, where we gave it to istros so there was no other evident evidence but if the settlement is called yeah harbor of istros <laughs> then you may as well give it to istros yeah exactly right um, <laughs> So um, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting case because it falls under the protection of a Getic uh, ruler of the Getai um, oh, really? nearby in around 200 BC, um, and he defends it against another Getai ruler. And then the Istrians they raise a select band of archers, which brings us to the unique unit, the Istrian yeah. archers. Um, so they are collected over not hoplites but archers, which is of course also a reflection of Getic and Scythian styles of warfare. Yeah, and it, again, like the Phoebes, it made sense if you if you just want to defend territory and if you have small fortresses and all that across your territory, then arches are quite yeah. perfect. If you have a tower or a wall, then arches are very very useful. Yeah, and yeah, that's basically why the Istrians are there. They have a unique position and they have a unique unit. And uh, yeah, there's not too many other options in this area of the map aside from neighboring Olbia, of course which we would get to yeah that's the next, next. one so we can uh, we can move straight on to Olbia, which is over here i believe that's the only settlement they have right i can't see any others yeah. on the map so Olbia across here is actually a large town looking pretty nice and we've got anthesterios of Olbia as well uh, nice got a bit of management but yeah so they're up here just what's this which which river is this Oh, and well, one. one of them is, is the Dnieper. This is probably the Dnieper, isn't it? Yeah, is it? yeah. yeah I think that's the Dnieper, I think. The, the Greeks called it Boris Tennis, and um, they, they, the, the, sometimes they also call the city Boris Tennis. But yeah. there may have also been a Greek settlement in the area, and the, the, the Olbians probably destroyed it in the 6th century BC. Oh, cool. I mean, Olbia, like most of the cities in this area, and also all the other ones which come after these, uh, was a colony of Miletos. Mm. Um, in in Ionia, and um, of course, it, it had some influences from from the Scythians it lived with, and Herodotus visited the place, and he was very impressed by its riches. Um, yeah, it's 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 a bit ironic that they only have one settlement, even though they were probably more powerful than the Pentapolis or Istros. <laughs> well, um, they have a lot of income, and they've got good good units. Um, yeah. in arches, for instance, and um, it was the center of the office. They lived a strictly vegetarian and ascetic life, um, <laughs> honoring Orpheus and Dionysos. And um, yeah, it was a major place. And it also repelled an invasion by Alexander the Great, who sent Superion, one of his generals, with 30,000 men. Wow. And then in the late 3rd century BC, it also repelled an advance by, well, a people we, which are called Galatians, but we don't really know who they are because we are in modern day Ukraine here, yeah. so we are coming from. Maybe these are the Bastani, the Germanic tribe who settled mm. on the western coast of, of uh, the Black Coast. Maybe they are just Galatians from modern day Slovakia or Poland. Yeah. But in any case, again, the Albians preserved their independence and, and pushed back their enemies. Um, also, a lot of. Uh, a lot of money <laughs> was also crucial in this this time uh, yeah. but it later became a scythian protectorate and then later a roman protectorate then a summation protectorate mm. and finally a protectorate of the bosporan empire um yeah. but the ruins are still very famous nowadays and um visited or used to be visited before the war at yeah. least uh by people by many tourists and archaeologists mm. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, that's that's interesting. Didn't actually know much about Olbia. One thing to note uh, as well, uh, when we were talking about the uh, the Danube River, like these, if you didn't catch the video last week, go and watch it about the map. Uh, but we talked about how this might look different from modern day because it's based on the uh, historical maps of the areas. So, you know, these areas look different to modern day. And it makes sense. These areas are all 
carved by rivers, so it's not going to stay in the same place. Yeah. Same thing with the estuary of the Nile. It's different because it's based on historical maps rather than the modern day uh, maps of the areas as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the Olbians have the Olbio Polite Archers, the Mixed Hellenic Archers, which I'm guessing is a Scythian um, Hellenic hybrid archer. Yeah, yeah, kind of. It's exactly based on archaeological evidence um, published by Ukrainian archaeologists recently. And then um, he thankfully suggested a unit <laughs> yeah. in a magazine. So uh, it was an easy picking for us. <laughs> yeah, uh, good. And then uh, Olbio Polite Hoplites as well. So just just the Olbian yeah. Hoplites, basically. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, Olbio Polite is the name for them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then finally, we have a Chersonesos down in the south of Crimea. Well, west and south of Crimea down here. Really nice color, actually. I do like that color quite a bit. But I, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, they've got three three sort of uh, towns and large towns, it looks like. We've got Ap Apollonius the Holy over here as well. Uh, but yeah, one. Oh, it's all, they're all large towns. They're actually going to be relatively rich to start with. Uh, but what were these guys up to then back in the day? <laughs> so uh, as, as everyone who's a ge geography nerd will have already realized, Chersonesos is not actually Cherson in modern Ukraine, but it's Sevastopol. <laughs> mm. Even though Cherson obviously has the same name, but yeah. the ancient Greek um, Chersonesos just means uh, something like peninsula, so it um, ah, could be okay. anywhere really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And yeah, it, it immediately after foundations by um, Heraclea Pontige once again, um, set up two emporia, emporiae trade harbors, Kalos Liman, which translates as the beautiful harbor, and Kakinitis. And it was a rich trading post out there. And of course, as you can tell from a look at the map, it would struggle for independence against the Bosporan Empire yeah. to the east. And 4th century BC, the Bosporans would invade Chesonesos in its territory, but Heraclea. Um, its mother city, it would come to Chersonesos' help, so in difference to um, the, its colonies in the Metapolis, it did not let Chersonesos <laughs> down. <laughs> it was so loyal to Chersonesos, actually, that um, after it later joined, I think, with the of Pontos, or uh, um, did it? I think so, at least. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I think it did. Um, he saved it from a Scythian attack. Uh, but the city lost Kirkinegis and uh, Carlos Lehman in the late 2nd century BC to, to the Scythians. And then they al allied with the Sumatians to defeat the Scythians. Mm. So a little back and forth, but alliances with Sumatians, with Scythians as well. Um, not really any, uh, they didn't really make a great difference there. They always just preserve, preserve their autonomy. But the Nero um, had to save it from the Scythians once again, <laughs> 61 AD. And when Nero saves you, that's usually a bit of a problem. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he left Roman troops there. When Hadrian became emperor, he was not very happy with the solution to have Roman troops up there so far away from the actual yeah. Roman Empire. Um, so he gave it to the Bosporan Empire, who, of course, had been trying to conquer it for half a millennium. <laughs> but citizens of Chersonesos were not amused, and under Antoninus, Antoninus Pius, um, the successor of Hadrian, they would regain the independence because Heraclea was still a free city within the Roman Empire at this point. Oh, right. Which uh, is testament to the big importance of Heraclea Pontiget. Yeah. And they asked, they petitioned with the emperor to give Chersonesos back its freedom, and he actually restored it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, I've learned a lot today. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me, and thank you guys for watching, and guys and girls, I should say, and everyone. Um, we hope you enjoyed the video, and there will be more RAS content in the coming weeks on Red Z's channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can tell you that. And uh, we are building towards the, the next release, of course, of RIS 0 0.6, and as you can see, um, we've made great progress with the factions, the units, and the map, which is at this moment being completely finished. So um, there's going to be so much new stuff you won't believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So stay tuned, guys. Make sure you do subscribe. Make sure you do like this video if you've appreciated it. Uh, appreciated it because there might be another couple of videos coming with Mouselos uh, in the future as well. So. Uh, 
keep that in mind. Um, and make sure you check out the Greek AOR units and the uh, and the map showcase if you've not seen the map showcase as well. And stay tuned because, as I've said already, every weekend, guys, is going to be an in-depth uh, development update on version 0.6 all the way to release. So every weekend, you're going to be full of RAS content just like this. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks once again to the mod team, especially um, Mausolos. So thank you very much uh, for watching, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video.